Hooty who all my stock market gamblers. Welcome today. It's Monday. Stock market's back open after the long weekend. Hope everybody had a great Easter. Market today down a little bit. Dow down about 100. NASDAQ down about 50. Now what do I think's going to happen? I think the stock market's going to come down and retest the February low. Probably even take out the February low and go a little bit lower. Probably going to get a capitulation day where it looks like the market starting to crash. But I don't think this is the crash yet. I really don't. It's been too orderly. I think we're going to find the bottom and then we're going to head higher, maybe even reaching new all-time highs. I do think a crash is coming though. I do think so. Later in the year, just not yet. This is kind of more orderly. It's an orderly correction, if you will. So I do think we're going to find the bottom, but I do think we're going to come down, retest the February lows, probably even take them out. Okay, so now let's move on to the real estate market. It just gets more and more fascinating to me. I mean, Zillow, they just came out with this article, right? Okay, now they're expecting the housing market to go up 20% this year, 20% this year, but that's not the funny part. Also, 20% in 2023. They expect it to continue into 2024. They expect the market to keep going higher, going higher. Now, well, let's just say they get a few things wrong. They did lose, well, billions of dollars trying to flip properties. They didn't predict that very well, and I don't think they're predicting this very well. If you watch this channel, you know I completely have the opposite opinion. And I'm going to tell you why I have this opinion. I have the opinion that we'll probably see a 50% correction. And in 2024, like when they say the market's still going to be heading higher, I say 2024 is probably going to be a really good time to pick up some bargains. And those bargains are probably going to be half off. Now, what's interesting here? Okay, let, let me just tell you a funny story first. Uh, this story is about an elderly gentleman. He listed his home for $1.2 million. This is down in Southern California. $1.2 million doesn't sound that outrageous for Southern California, but it ended up selling for $2.5 million. Uh, over a hundred percent of the listing price. Now that was fascinating to me, but you see, let me tell you the game a lot of agents play. A lot of agents like to list the property really low and that way everybody gets excited about, yeah, I'm going to get this property. I'm going to get this property. And then they have like an auction and the auction, they get these bids going up, right? And, and, and in this particular case, there were five or 10 offers that were over $2 million, but the property only listed at 1.2 million. Well, I'm telling you, this is the game that the real estate agents play. Now, the real estate agent, she's not that dumb. You know, she knew it was going to sell for over $2 million. But this way, in her advertising, her marketing, she can say, yeah, I just sold the house for over double what it listed for. Hurry up and sell your house. Well, I believe in hurrying up and sell your house, but for completely different reasons. I think it's housing market is going to start to come down. And now it's fascinating to me that we're in the strongest part of the year right now. Okay, so the strongest part of the year, April, May, and June, these are the prime selling months. But yet the market's starting to soften and prices in many areas, not all areas, but in many areas are starting to come down. You see them softening now in the strongest time of the year. The prices are starting to soften. Okay, so this tells me that we have a problem in the housing market. We have a definite problem. Now there's a few other at least in indicators that tell me the same thing. Well, for example, Google searches for real estate, they're down about 8% year over year. Now, why are they down? Well, fewer people are searching for homes right now. Fewer people searching. Google's proof of that. The uh, online search is down 8% year over year. So that's a, one way I can tell. Now, here's something interesting. California, okay, we keep track of how many people go through a home, how many tours are given. Okay, so uh, very few people are calling me up right now saying, Mike, I want to go see this home. In other words, fewer and fewer people are taking tours of property. Now, just from the first of the year till now, till the end of March, the number of tours going through, people going through the homes, well, it's down 22% in California. Now, 
when I list a property, I put the property on, there's what I call the herd. The herd comes through in the first week or the second week. If I get no offers, I know my house is overpriced, right? But it, the herd comes through and you usually get one or two offers. Well, the herd is starting to thin out. It's thinning out by 22%. Now, the herd's going to thin out more. It's going to be like 50% and then maybe only down to 20%. And then pretty soon, nobody's going to be coming to even look at the houses because they're just unaffordable. So the number of tours of homes being listed is down 22% just from the first of the year till now. That's how quickly things are changing. Now why is that changing? Well, it's changing because we got the interest rate. Interest rates moved up from 3% to 5%. This is pricing people out of the market, right? It's pricing them out. They can't afford the market anymore. So we're seeing some softening there. Okay. And the third thing I want to talk about, okay, mortgage application. I'm not talking about mortgages for refining your properties. No, those have pretty much gone to zero. I mean, people are not refining their property because their property was, you know, has a 3% loan. You don't want to refi at a 5% loan unless you're desperate for money and you need to take money out of your house. A lot of people use their houses as the ATM. But just mortgage applications to purchase property are down 15% year over year. Why are we slowing down? Why are we slowing down? This is the prime selling season, right? It's the prime selling season. It's got to be the time where people are buying, where people are getting these mortgages, but it's not working out that way. All right. Now, look at the Federal Reserve. They raise rates by a quarter percent, but yet mortgages are up 2% already. They went from 3% to 5%. But the Federal Reserve, they've only raised rates by a quarter. Now, why? Why did mortgage rates jump so high? That was the question in the comments. Very good question. You know, Fed raises by a quarter percent. We're up 2%. Well, here's the reason. Okay. So the reason is the mortgage market front runs the market. They know that the Fed's not done. Fed's just getting started. They don't want to be the bag holder stuck holding the property. So that's why rates have gone up more than just a quarter percent. But the other real reason that rates have spiked up so much is the Federal Reserve again. The Federal Reserve... Uh 2009, they started buying mortgages because well, because we had the great financial collapse, right? And house prices came down 34%. They go, we can't have this. So we got to get these rates low and we got to get them low really quick. So they started buying $40 billion of mortgages every month in 2009. They haven't stopped. They haven't stopped. They've been buying mortgages for over, what, 12 years? I mean, this is price distortions in the market. And that's why we got to get rid of the Fed. They pretty much distort prices in every market. But anyway, so they were buying $40 billion worth of mortgages every month. Well, the Fed came out and they said, well, we're going to stop buying them. We're going to stop buying these mortgages. Okay, well, they're, if they're not buying the mortgages, who's buying the mortgages? Where's the money come from? Well, the money gets tighter. You know, you got to raise the rate so that people will actually loan money. But not only did they stop buying the $40 billion, they stopped started to sell, well, basically $35 billion a month are being sold. So from buying $40 billion to selling $35 billion, that's $75 billion a month taken out of the mortgage market. Well, of course rates are going to go higher. And they have. They've gone from 3% to 5%. But I really think 5% is just the starting point. I think we're going to see 6 7% mortgages. And this is not going to be good for the housing market. It's just not not. It's going to it's going to really constrict demand for the houses. Its affordability factor is just going down and down and down. It just is. I mean, okay. So so what else do you got that you can tell what's happening in the housing market? Well, let's let's go back to the stock market and take a look at housing stocks. How are they doing? Well, Zillow says that house prices are going to go up twenty percent a year, but yet their stock is dropping more than twenty percent a year. I think it's like seventy percent down from its all-time high. Really? In the hottest housing market ever, Zillow, you can't figure out how to make money? Well, that's pretty sad. Kind of looks like they might be a little bit incompetent. But that, so I'm not putting the blame on them. Let's look at other housing stocks. Look at Lennar, home builder, right? Down 30, 40%. Look at Toll Brothers, same thing. Down 30, 40%. Look at Open Door. Open Door's the other house. While well, they have flip houses, you know, they're an iBuyer. They're down 
down about 50%. The housing stocks are just coming down, coming down, getting lower. And they're getting lower because the housing market's bad. It's, it's not really that good. I mean, people, they think it's good, but the market is slowing down in a time when it should be just taking off. And it's not going to be taking off. Now, I do say that we're going to go down 50%. Now, people go, Mike, it can't go down 50%. Well, it, it, it can. It can. It went down 34% in the great financial crisis. But the debt bubble, the debt bubble's bigger. It's a bigger bubble now that we're in. It really is. And so it's going to drop a lot more when this bubble pops. Look at, okay, look, look at Japan in the 90s. Japan in the 90s, their houses went down 80, 85% in the 90s. It never recovered. When the, our house prices crash, it's going to take a very long time to recover so if you're buying a home right now you better be planning to stay in it for 5 10 20 years just so you can get your money back right okay so the housing market is changing it's changing violently it's shifting i'm telling you hold off if you can hold off wait wait till wait till christmas time go buy a house then look at i think in 2024 there's going to be some bargains coming i think the bargains are really going to be about half off this is just my opinion. I'm Tall Mike. If you like this stuff, give me the thumbs up. Really like it, hit that subscribe button, and then we can talk again more. This is so fun. Get out there. Have a great Monday, everybody. Hope to talk to you again real soon. Bye-bye now.